The 2024 NBA Draft Lottery just wrapped up on Sunday, and we now have the official order for what is lining up to be one of the most uncertain drafts in recent memory. The Atlanta Hawks ended up with the top selection after entering the lottery with only a 3% chance to do so, with the Rockets moving up as well to number 3 with the Brooklyn pick. On the flip side of that though, Detroit and Charlotte were the unlucky ones, being bumped out of the top 4 and picking 5th and 6th respectively. With the way the board is set up, it's pretty much anyone's guess when it comes to how these selections will play out, so let's dive into my first official 2024. For NBA mock draft. With the first pick, the Hawks take French 7 footer Alex Saar. Saar spent last season with the Perth Wildcats of the Australian NBL, and he gives Atlanta some desperately needed defensive versatility and athleticism in the short term, while also flashing the enticing ball skills that make him more palatable as a number one pick. At two, the Wizards take Serbian point guard Nikola Topic. Topic has been one of the most productive players in this year's class and is an absolute playmaking maestro in pick and roll settings. Washington has an interesting collection of wing talent headlined by guys like Denny Avdia and Bilal Koulibaly, but they do really need a high upside table setter and Topic can fill that role seamlessly. Houston has a lot of future pieces in place, so they can go a lot of different directions here, but I have them taking Kentucky guard Reed Shepard as someone who can be a connective guard while also shooting lights out from three and making high IQ plays on the defensive end. I'm not sure Shepard is a star, but Houston has the personnel around him to get the most out of his skill set. The Spurs get Shepard's college teammate Rob Dillingham at four as someone who can create his own offense, hit difficult shots, and heat up almost instantly. Dillingham's scoring and playmaking craft is exactly what the Spurs need to pair with Victor Wembanyama, and they also provide enough defensive insulation for Dillingham to thrive. Detroit once again got hosed in the lottery, ending up with a fifth pick for the third straight year, but still, I think 6'10 wing Zachary Risache makes a lot of sense for them here, as they could really use a shooter with size and defensive upside. Risache has been very hot and cold from 3 this year, but even through his inconsistency, he's shooting over 39% on a 50 plus game sample, so I'm willing to bet on that working itself out in the NBA. Charlotte ends up with the 6th pick, and I have them taking UConn wing Stefan Castle as someone who gives them an elite perimeter defender with untapped offensive potential as a slasher and cutter. Teams worry about his shot coming around, but his rare blend of size, power, agility and strength makes him a good enough prospect and fit to take here. At 7, I have Portland taking Modest Buzelis. A 6'10 forward from Ignite, Buzelis has a polished skill set for his size, as he's fluid on the ball and showed flashes of being able to create his own offense down the road. He's also an impactful weak side defender, which will help Portland immensely, and while the Blazers do need shooting, and Buzelis struggled in that area this year, he did hit 41% of his threes as a senior in high school, so there is some promise there. Having already taken Rob Dillingham at 4, I have the Spurs taking Tennessee's Dalton Connect at 8 due to his well-rounded scoring ability. San Antonio shot 34.7% from 3 this year, which was good for 3rd worst in the NBA, and Connect should help greatly with that, as he can hit shots in a variety of ways. He's not a great defender, but again, the Spurs already have that defensive infrastructure in place to mitigate his deficiencies. Memphis gets a true center in Donovan Klingon here at 9, as he'll be able to help them immediately as a post defender and screen setter with his 7'2", 265 pound frame. Klingon is also great as a passer and roll man, so that'll really open up things for John Morant getting down Hill, and it should create a more fluid offensive operation for the Grizzlies in totality. At 10, Utah gets the best player available in 6'8 wing Ron Holland. Holland's defensive aggression and motor should really help a Jazz team that graded out as the worst defensive team in the league this season, and he also offers some real potential as a scorer, as he averaged 19 points a game for Ignite this year, and showed a nice ability to get to his spots and manufacture buckets. The Bulls have a lot of issues, so it's hard to address all of them with just one pick, but I have them taking USC point guard Isaiah Collier at 11. With Lonzo Ball's status in perpetual doubt and a lack of high upside prospects on the roster, Collier's ability to get downhill, combined with his flashes of high-level playmaking, makes him the right fit for Chicago here. Oklahoma City has built so well that they can pretty much do whatever they want at 12, but I'll have them taking Duke big Kyle Filipowski, as he's a skilled and high-feel offensive player who can dribble, pass, and shoot, which the Thunder highly value. While I have some concerns with him defensively, the offensive skill package is undeniable, and he should fit right in with an ascending Thunder squad. The King could go a lot of different directions here, but I have them taking Baylor big man Eves Misi as someone who will give them an offensively low usage center who can provide rim protection and toughness on the defensive end thanks to his freakish frame and athletic tools. He'll take some seasoning, but he's worth the investment for Sacramento seeing that they need interior physicality. Portland doubles down on wings by taking Colorado freshman Cody Williams at 14. An enticing prospect thanks to his length and shot making, Williams gives the Blazers a wing spot up shooting threat with the upside to potentially become a more well-rounded score down the line to pair with Scoot Henderson and the rest of their young core. At 15, I have the Miami Heat taking Providence guard Devin Carter. 
from a play style fit, Carter aligns perfectly with Miami due to his defensive relentlessness and overall aggression. He also gives Miami another shot making guard who can hit tough shots and get to the rim, and he should have a real chance to crack the rotation as a rookie thanks to his maturity. Philadelphia has a ton of roster uncertainty heading into next year, so at 16 I had them taking Colorado wing Tristan Da Silva as a skilled and versatile offensive option that would have a decent chance to play for them right away. He gives the Sixers some three point shooting and an ability to play multiple positions, depending on their personnel. The Pelicans are up at 17 and while this pick could end up going to the Lakers if New Orleans decides to defer it to 2025, assuming they keep it, I have them taking Jacoby Walter out of Baylor. Walter gives the Pelicans a 6'6 movement shooting threat after taking another movement shooter in Jordan Hawkins last year, and around Zion, I think having a lot of outside shooting threats is tantamount to postseason success, and Walter certainly fills that role with a frame that could lead to even more impact down the line. At 18, the Orlando Magic addressed their shooting needs by taking Duke guard Jared McCain. McCain is one of the smartest and most composed players in this class, and will give the Magic another solid perimeter defender who can fit in at a low usage offensive weapon that helps space the floor around Paolo Bancaro and Franz Wagner. At 19, I have Toronto taking a swing on upside and 6'9 forward to John Saloon. Saloon has unique athletic traits combined with real on-ball fluidity that makes him an intriguing fit with a Toronto organization that likes to draft explosive players with outlier physical frames. And while he's probably a few years away from contributing, it makes sense for the Raptors to swing for the fences at this point in the draft. Cleveland is up at 20 and I think they target TJ Shannon out of Illinois. Shannon's ability to get downhill with the ball and draw fouls should give the Cavs some athletic pop and an in-between option for Garland and Mobley, and he'd also contribute to what could be an elite defensive front court thanks to his physicality and lateral movement. After targeting shooting a few picks earlier, I think the Pelicans look at some size and take Indiana big Khalil Ware at 21. Ware had a productive sophomore season as a Hoosier, averaging a near double-double at 16 points and 10 boards a game, and he also showed real promise as a floor spacing option, which again could be valuable for New Orleans, as he hit 42.5% of his 43-point attempts on the year. Phoenix just needs rotation-ready guys to complement their core of Durant, Beal, and Booker, so at 22, I have them taking Marquette point guard Tyler Kolick as someone who can actually facilitate offense and make good decisions on the ball. Kolick gives the Suns a stabilizing option whose playmaking should be even more unleashed with NBA spacing. With Brooke Lopez hitting free agency at the end of next season, the Bucks get a jumpstart on his replacement by taking 7'4 Purdue big man Zach Eady at 23. Edie's ability to create space in the lane and convert on easy post-up opportunities and lobs should be a welcome addition for the Bucks, with his rebounding and screening being big pluses as well. The Knicks have back-to-back -back picks here at 24 and 25, so I'll have them taking 6'10 big man Tyler Smith. As while he's somewhat of a question mark defensively, which could limit his playing time early, he presents an enticing offensive skill set that features real athletic pop, substantial shot making, and intelligent off-ball movement. And at 25, I'll have the Knicks taking Virginia wing Ryan Dunn, who might just be the most disruptive defender in the draft as he uses his long 6'8 frame to do just about everything on that end of the floor, which seems perfect for head coach Tom Thibodeau. His offensive game is far from NBA ready as he struggles to do anything outside of run and dunk, but still, the defense is just that damn good to the point where it might not even matter in a limited role. Washington is up again at 26 and I have them taking a swing on Miami's Keyshawn George as someone who at 6'8 showed real on-ball creation skills in addition to shooting a blistering 41% from three-point range on over four attempts per game. George can still look raw when it comes to rim finishing and decision making, but the upside at 26 is too good to pass up for the Wizards. Minnesota is up at 27 and I have them targeting Pitts, Carlton, Carrington as a potential backup point guard who can rebound, pass, and create for himself in the mid-range. While he struggles getting to the rim and from three, his weaknesses can be covered nicely by Minnesota's other roster pieces, and it should allow for Carrington to focus on what he does well. At 28, I had the Nuggets going back to the Kansas well and taking 6'9 freshman Johnny Furphy. After a slow start to the season, Furphy really came on strong, emerging as a reliable starter for the Jayhawks, and his athleticism and shooting gives Denver another young weapon to work with around their championship core. At 29, I have Furphy's teammate Kevin McCuller going to the Utah Jazz. McCuller made a name for himself early on in his career for his defense, where he's incredibly strong and mobile, but he also really improved as a shooter and connecting playmaker throughout his time at Kansas, making him a smart option for the Jazz as an older, composed player who already has a lot of NBA-ready traits. To round out this mock, I have Boston taking 6'6 Weber State swingman Dylan Jones. At some point in the draft, I think production matters, and few players were more productive this season than Jones, as he averaged close to 21 points, 10 boards, and 5 assists per game. 
While he did struggle as a three-point shooter, he did hit 86% of his free throws, which gives you confidence moving forward. And the idea is that he gives the Celtics a mature and versatile weapon to bolster their title contention window. And that will wrap up my first mock draft of the 2024 cycle. I'll probably do another one of these closer to the actual draft. And also stay tuned for my big board video where I'll rank my top 60 prospects in this year's class. Thanks so much for watching and give me your thoughts below.